Hey everyone, my name's Lewis and I recently graduated with a first in my astrophysics degree. But one thing you may not know is that I almost never became a graduate. In fact, I almost never went to university at all. That's because when I left school, I left with one grade short of what I needed to get into university and so I had to sit an entrance exam. But three years later, I flipped my academic journey around. And so today I'm going to share some of the techniques and methods that I used over those three years to improve my productivity and to achieve a first. The first technique I use is to practice stringent time management. When we're at university, we're often given a load of deadlines, often in quick succession of one another. And if we leave those deadlines unplanned, then we can end up having to cram a lot of work in right at the very end, uh, which can induce a lot of stress and can lower the quality of work. And this idea of cramming work in right at the end, which a lot of students seem to do, is a factor of what we call Parkinson's law, which states that work expands to fill the time allocated to it. An example of this could be given an assignment for a week's time. We'll often end up using the whole week to complete that assignment when perhaps if we just spent one day of solid work focusing on that assignment only, we would end up completing the assignment within a shorter amount of time and to the same quality. So I use three main techniques to overcome Parkinson's law. The first is to practice time blocking. Time blocking is the technique of blocking off time in our calendars every day in order to focus on one task and one task only. That task could be revision or it could be completing an assignment or doing practice problems. But the important thing is for those maybe two or three hours, we focus on that one task only. This helps us with concentration because we're not distracted by other tasks that we want to do. And it also increases the quality of work I've found as well. Now the second technique goes in tandem with time blocking and that's setting artificial deadlines. So in the example I set earlier where we had a week to finish an assignment, this could involve maybe setting the deadline for the assignment to be half a week away. That means that you've got less time to do the work and so you're cutting out half the time for Parkinson's law to take place. This gives us breathing room with our work and allows us to plan for unintended disruptions to the work. For example, other tasks becoming more important or illness which may not allow us to do work in that time. And so we can still complete the assignments and the, and the tasks that we've got in that time by the deadline. And the third method comes from one of my favorite self-development books, which is uh, Deep Work by Cal Newport. And that is to get into a state of flow. Um, now, a state of flow is this state which allows us to do intense amount of works in a short amount of time. Um, and it's quite hard to get into, but it's defined as an area where we can do deep work. And there's a very simple formula to describe deep work, which is high quality work equals time spent times intensity of focus. Now, here we want to focus on the intensity bit. By removing distractions from our workplace, both physically and digitally, we allow ourselves to get into a state of intense focus, which we call the state of flow. And it allows us to perform high quality work in a shorter amount of time, which is absolutely essential for any university student who's got a load of deadlines coming up. Now, Cal Newport talks a lot more about deep work, obviously, in his book. Um, so if you are interested in learning how to get into a state of flow and perform deep work, I'd highly recommend that you um, read this book because it's got a ton of useful information, especially for students. So I definitely recommend. The second principle that I followed to achieve a first at university was to learn outside of the classroom or lecture theater. One of the biggest misconceptions that I had going into university was that everything I'd need to learn would be in the lectures. And while for the most part that's true, I mean, for almost all your exams, you're going to learn that stuff in the lectures. There's two problems with that idea. The first is that it doesn't account for missed lectures. Now, we'll often end up missing lectures for a whole number of reasons. And although nowadays most of the lectures are recorded, there's oftentimes uh, technical difficulties with those recordings or they, they miss out of bits of information at the start and end of lectures where they're not recording. And so you can end up missing quite a bit of valuable information. And again, it doesn't even account for the fact that some lectures are just flat out not recorded. And if you miss those lectures, you miss out on the information. Secondly, it assumes that lecture teaching is most effective. And for most people, just sitting in a lecture theatre and copying down the information that the lecturer is talking about or this on the PowerPoint isn't actually that effective. So how did I get around this? I began learning outside of lectures. 
Now this can come in multiple different forms. For me, it was mainly watching YouTube videos on similar subjects, um, be that a general overview of the topic, or even in some cases, in-depth videos past what I'd end up learning in the lectures. In other cases then, I'd do practice problems which would allow me to prepare for exams. And this helped me find the gaps in my knowledge and allow me to fill those in well in advance of the exam and even well in advance of the lectures. And this helps with completing assignments and doing your final exam. Now in order to learn effectively, we need to know how we learn effectively. And that involves doing trial and error to find the methods that work for us. But just sitting in a lecture theater and just consuming knowledge in one format isn't the ideal way of doing it. It may be the best way, but you may have to uh, do trial and error in order to find out which method is best for you. Now that could be reading from textbooks, which a lot of people have sort of switched away from, but I found that reading textbooks can be really useful. It could be watching YouTube videos like I do, or it could be just watching the lectures. But the important thing is that you find what's most effective for you in terms of learning and focus on trying to consume knowledge in that way. Thirdly, I used a mindset, which is that practice and persistence makes better. We're often told that practice makes perfect, but I disagree with this notion. Practice makes perfect assumes that perfection is something that can be achieved, and in many cases it can't. And in the cases that it can be, it's often a waste of energy to try and increase your uh, abilities by that 0.1-0.2% to get to perfection. It's much better, in my opinion, to focus on a broad range of skills and to become better at those through persistent practice. In fact, the pursuit of perfection is perhaps one of the most unproductive habits that we can have. Practice won't make perfect, but practice will make you better at the skills that you're practicing. So a much more productive habit is rather than practicing the skills that we're already competent at in order to get perfection, practice the skills that we struggle with, which will be of most use to us in the near future. And this is where persistence comes in. To practice a hard skill requires persistence and this is probably one of the most difficult things to do because it forces us into a place of discomfort. It's not easy to sit for several hours focusing on one skill that doesn't come naturally to us but with persistence those skills become easier over time and these skills could be anything from writing to programming to maths. A lot of people complain about maths saying that they just can't do it or they're just not a maths person but that doesn't take into account the fact that they don't practice maths regularly. With practice and persistence, we can learn these skills over time and improve them. And that goes for maths just as much as any other skill. For me, I struggled with the maths that was involved with quantum mechanics and special relativity, but rather than just give up and just say that those were topics that I wouldn't understand, I decided that I would take a step back, start learning the fundamental maths again, and start building my foundation of knowledge. And that ended up with me getting a first in both of those courses. So it goes to show that just putting a bit of persistence in and spending the time to learn these skills is a valuable skill in and of itself. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, is to prioritize our health. As much as we can be put under pressure to try and achieve the best grades possible, there's nothing more important than our health, both physical and mental. And physical and mental health can both have a massive impact on our ability to perform high quality work. As counterintuitive as it may seem, taking 30 minutes away from a task and going for a walk and then coming back can actually really improve our ability to perform that task. A recent study in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found that a sedentary behaviour is associated with impaired cognition, whereas exercise acutely improves cognition. In other words, moderate exercise improves our cognitive ability with decision making and work. Just as important as physical health is mental health. As much as it's a place for mental growth, University can be really mentally draining and it's really easy to push that bit too hard. Poor mental health can lead to a lack of motivation, burnout and even more serious consequences. Now luckily in recent years there's been more resources and areas for support with mental health but here's a few of the things that I've done in order to try and maintain good mental health throughout university. First is to have a switch off time. This is a technique that I again learned from deep work um, and that is a time where past that point you do no more work and you switch off from your work. This helps us to have a better work-life balance and to stop us from working all the way through the night, which is very easy to do when especially you've got a lot of deadlines. 
but this can often lead to burnout and so the simple act of switching off our work brain for the night allows us to get good sleep, allows us to stress less and allows us to recharge our mental batteries. Secondly is to take up hobbies. Now, the good thing is that university is the perfect place for this because you've got societies and clubs running all year round. And even simple hobbies like cooking can really impact our mental health and allow us to take time away from work. And the good thing about hobbies like cooking and going to the gym, for example, is that they both impact and improve our mental health as well as our physical health. Finally, if you're struggling with anything, make sure that you talk to someone about it. Having a support network is really important, especially in places of high stress like university. And so when you are feeling stressed, knowing that you've got people to talk to can be really comforting and allow us to sort of calm down a little bit from those high stress situations. So those are some of the techniques that I've used throughout university to achieve a first. If you're a new student just starting university or you're already part of university, hopefully you can find some value out of these and apply them to your own university lives. And if you've got any of your own uh, techniques, make sure to leave them down in the comment section for other students to use as well. Uh, with that being said, I just wanted to say thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.